All right, from uh, Kathy now, recovery question for you. I did Ironman Maryland recently, did an easy bike ride yesterday, this is from the email, and an easy four-mile run this morning. So back-to-back little workouts. Legs are still heavy. What is a normal recovery time after a full-distance Ironman because I feel slow? What's normal? Normal is such a subjective word. Generally, the the thumb is to take a few days up to maybe a few weeks off following an Ironman. It all depends on if you have races planned after your Ironman, how you recover. So kind of it's a loaded question. But assuming you don't have any races planned or maybe this was your first Ironman, take some time to recover. Even if you you jump back on with some easy workouts, sure, you're going to be tired and sore and fatigue. I like to call it residual fatigue. I could feel just this residual. I could feel great the week after. And then it catches up to me on week two or week three where all of a sudden the emotions die down, the excitement dies down, and I'm really, really tired and I just want to sleep. So I allow my body I let my body sleep. I don't, I don't feel the need to have to do anything if my body and mind don't want to. So general rule of thumb, three to four weeks Hmm. or longer, depending on how experienced you are. How about, how about, what have you noticed for your Ironman recovery time? I don't know if it's an ego thing, but sometimes I feel really good the next couple of days. And then I want to get out and just, uh, you know, get some stats out there. Like, Hey, I'm still working out. just did an Ironman. I don't do that anymore, but I remember doing that before. But I would think uh, I, I like your rule of thumb, and I, I think there's got to be some recovery exercises in there to keep the body, you know, moving. So if you know these light swims to go through the motions or something to stay off your your legs, because I think the running the thing for me has been the the most um, difficult to recover from after that the, the marathon. So even some light spinning, but to keep going of some type of motion nothing hard but just to stay active so i you know people say hey i'm I'm trying to hang on to this fitness or keep this fitness mo- uh, momentum going if i want to carry carry it into another race or another training block but there got to be that time for the body to just to catch up from the pounding and the uh the endurance zapping that it does to you over that you know somewhat a 12 to 17 hour period Right. So I think for me, the impact of the run, how hard or how fast I run that marathon Mm -hmm. is going to dictate and determine how well I recover and how quickly I recover. Mm -hmm. If I have, there's been one year where I actually did Ironman Hawaii and then six weeks later I did Ironman Arizona. Yeah. But that year I did Hawaii, I walked the marathon. So I recovered. I felt recovered like the next day. Yeah. But I also know from past experiences, I've gone back into training too much too soon after an Ironman and I've gotten sick. So usually, you know, I'll give myself two weeks of, I, I'm not even going to think about racing. I'm not even going to think about working out other than easy swims, easy jogs, maybe a 30 minute spin, nothing long or intense. And then after two weeks, I decide, okay, where's my body? Where's my mind? What do I want to do next? Yeah, I'm thinking when I used to cover the the races quite a bit as, you know, the videographer and reporter, some of the athletes, the pros, would strategically plan on dropping out after the bike to save their legs. And they're more of a, you know, kind of a, a training race for them because they can go hard in the swim and they're there under an hour. They can go hard on the bike four and a half hours to five hours, whatever it be, and save their legs because that's the, the hardest thing to recover from. And then they can do an Ironman a week later or two weeks later or so because they didn't stress out their legs so much. So that mm-hmm. could be a tactic. Like you said, you, you walk the marathon, which allowed your legs to recover faster than normal for the next six weeks uh, that you were planning to do the next race. So it depends on what you do on that run or if you do the run at all. Uh, so what your body can, whatever your body tells you. Right. I mean, after my first Ironman in 1997, 24 years, I'm 24 years old. I'm like, I'm the fittest I've ever been. I don't want to lose this. And that's when I, I didn't take a break. Oh, I was so sore. Like I was so sore for weeks, but I wouldn't stop because 
I didn't want to. My my mind didn't, my body wanted to, but my mind didn't want to. Mm-hmm. And then, so we're talking, Kona was in October. We're talking by December, my body just shut down. And I was sick, like a chronic fatigue syndrome type sick for about six months that I just, I had to have six months off. I couldn't do a thing. I was exhausted. I was just, my adrenal glands, all that chronic fatigue syndrome stuff that you can look up online. That's what I experienced. And so it was a good lesson because it helped me figure out my why. I'm like, why do I do this sport? Mm-hmm. Cause I felt so horrible. I'm like, I never want to do an Ironman again because of the, re- my recovery was so horrible, but you know, it's a learning, it was a learning experience and here I am still doing it. 